please welcome uh, John Connors to Chapman. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Miller, uh, for that generous introduction. And uh, good afternoon to all of you uh, future entrepreneurs, right? I'm in the right spot, aren't I? Huh? You're all future entrepreneurs? OK. Well, I I'm going to tell you a story today about uh, a real American business hero, a friend of mine and client, Dr. George Lopez. Uh, he's the founder of ICU Medical. There's uh, Dr. Lopez, and uh, that's uh, one of his inventions he's holding up there. It's called the HR needle for high risk. So I'm going to tell you how I met Dr. Lopez, why his idea, uh, it was right to get a patent on it, what his invention was, why a patent was vital, vital to his startup company, and his bankruptcy and turnaround. Most startups fail, and so did I see you initially. And he came back and turned it around. So uh, and then I'm going to say what happened since the turnaround, and then I'm going to give you some real life observations on what it is to be an entrepreneur. All right, controversy dogs the high risk needle. Let me let me tell you what this does. Is that uh, so when you stick the needle into the patient as you withdraw it, you can pull this, hold this guard, pull it forward, and it locks in position here. And that was Dr. Lopez's, uh, one of his inventions. He keeps making all sorts of inventions. Uh, my journey uh, with Dr. Lopez started when I was given a lecture at Saddleback College to a, uh, really it was an adult education class and it was for people who were starting up a business. Now, I had just left uh, TRW, I was the uh, manager of their patent and licensing department, and uh, I had just started my own uh, practice. Uh, prior to that, I worked for such uh, companies as Bruning. They made copy machines. They eventually went out of business. Xerox killed them. Uh, Standard Oil of Indiana, big company, was acquired by British Petroleum. TRW was acquired by Northrop Grum Grumman. I did work for Brunswick, and I checked them out, and they haven't been acquired yet. I don't know why exactly. They were actually the most entrepreneurial company I worked for. There were a bunch of little businesses, you know, from bowling alleys to boats. Uh, but I looked at the, they're having a tough time right now, and I saw a lot of red. Uh, the, uh, at any rate, the, the reason I was giving this talk was to get new clients. What do you think is both sufficient and necessary to be successful in business? Got the ideas? Networking. No. Mm -hmm. Sufficient and necessary. Anyone else? Salesmanship. Close. Paying clients. My case, lawyers have clients. You guys might have customers. Paying those, you're right about cash flow. It's important that they pay. <laughs> uh, at any rate, I had just found one. Dr. Lopez was out in the audience. And so a few days, maybe a week or so later, he came into my office, and the meeting was memorial, OK? Uh, he really impressed me. He was a good-looking guy. Uh, but what really what, what it was, he radiated self-confidence. And I had a vision across his forehead in neon lights. I saw the word, winner. And that's what an entrepreneur is, a real winner. Now, if you notice that controversy that was dogging the high-risk needle there, this, this is something that everyone asks me about when I give a talk about patents. In the United States, the patent is awarded to the first to invent. Don't send yourself a self-addressed envelope describing a write-up with the invention, okay? Yes, do that. Have a drawing if it lends itself to it, if your invention lends itself to it. Go to someone who's not a co-inventor and have them sign and date it. And someone who's, who you can trust, obviously, and they should have a non-disclosure agreement, 
which give you rights to any improvements that they may make, as well as they agree not to use it or disclose it to anyone else. Okay. And then you have to reduce it to practice. And one way of doing that is filing a patent application. And under our system, a patent guarantees you a jury trial, okay, and you have the right to exclude anyone from making your patented invention. So why get a patent for his idea? Well, it grants exclusivity. And there's the patent on the HR uh, needle, incidentally. But back to my first meeting with Dr. Lopez. When he came into my office and I had this vision, all right, he, he really wanted to talk to me about a problem that he encountered. A patient of his died because of an accidental disconnect at what's called a piggyback. See where the needle's sticking into that rubber stopper down there in figure two? Well, they used to tape that up with some tape and either the nurse forgot to do it or it became disconnected. The patient died. So Dr. Lopez came up with what was called the click lock connector. And this was early, uh, actually had models built like this. And, and uh, one of them is what I, the top one figures uh, three and four are a screw-on version, you, you know, screw it on. That was kind of complicated. The second one was a snap-on where you just push it and, and, the, and the, uh, uh, the clips would kind of engage the, the, the the tube where the rubber stopper is and the needle would go into the rubber stopper and it would be kind of a latch and you could squeeze the clip and the, uh, it would release. So that, so what did he do? He, uh, he went and showed it to uh, some other big companies, Baxter and Abbott, and they turned down his idea, which is not at all uncommon. Uh, the not invented syndrome here is rampant in big companies. I know, I used to work for, for them, and I never uh, recall, maybe once, where they actually seriously looked at an unsolicited idea from outside the company. At one time, I guess the, the Procter & Gamble didn't even want to hear it from anyone outside the company. And I think they've changed their policy now, according to one of my clients who might interest them in one of his inventions. But, they usually have you sign a release which is going to say you cannot uh, sue them unless you get a patent. That there's nothing going to be held confidential. And, uh, and that's usually the case, not always 100%, but usually that's what the, what the global corporations will do. So what Dr. Lopez did is, even though they turned him down, one of the reasons they turned him down is they didn't think it could be manufactured properly. It was too difficult to manufacture, too many problems with it. And not only that, there weren't a lot of people saying that what a big problem it was because of accidental disconnects. So as far as the big companies were concerned, they weren't interested. Now most inventors, most of my clients who might be independent inventors, not entrepreneurs, Inventors invent products, new products, and new processes. Entrepreneurs invent companies. One of the few things I remember about e economics courses that I took in college was that an entrepreneur is the individual who brings land, labor, and capital together to produce wealth. That's really what they do. But it isn't that easy. It's easy to say, and I don't remember any courses when I went to school about entrepreneurship, like, like you uh, uh, folks are studying right now. But entrepreneurs do something else. And that's what I, Dr. Lopez did, is he redesigned it. Oops, wrong one. He redesigned it and made, here we go, the click lock. So Dr. Lopez, 